Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today I'm doing another one of these videos where I go through all of your comments and answer your immigration related questions. Now I've got quite a lot of questions in the past few days, so I'll probably make a few of the volumes. Uh, today, today, tomorrow, hopefully we will uh, see. Now before we start, as always, I'm gonna mention, I am not an immigration attorney. This is not a legal advice. All the information that I provide on in, in my videos on this channel are directly from the official sources, USAS.gov, government website, uh, Department of State, uh, and that's uh, really it. Now I wanted to say thanks to the supporters of this channel who are supporting my work through the feature like super thanks and the channel membership i really really appreciate it it helps me uh bring more quality content to this channel all right without further ado let's start with the very first uh comment question from estella nicholas uh commented on uh yes one of these videos answering your questions okay i'm a citizen and have filed petition for my alien married son lately can he apply for a visitor tourist visa while waiting for his papers to be processed? Thank you so much in anticipation for enlightening me on this matter. God bless and kudos to your channel. Estella, thank you very much for kind words. Uh, I really appreciate it. Not much of an enlightenment, unfortunately, but you do have a really, really excellent question. I think this, this uh, question might be helpful to a lot of other people. Uh, okay, so yes you definitely can he he can definitely apply for a visitor visa and that would be probably the best bet right because you know if 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 your son or, or whatever whoever is your relative right whoever you're petitioning for if they have the ability to simply come here and, and visit you in the meantime you know spend some time with you it is much easier to wait while their petition is being processed unfortunately Unfortunately, the outcome of this application will depend very heavily on the consul, the U.S. embassy that is in your, you know, in your country, in your town. It, it, it goes from one to another because here's here's why I say that because some consuls, the, the you know the people do, that do the interviewing uh, in the U.S. embassies, they count as the ground of inadmissibility the fact that he already applied for or there is a petition for him or her whoever is going through this interview there is an immigration process started right because he i'll try to explain it here here's how it looks right you're coming into the u.s embassy and you're asking for a non-immigrant visa while you already have an immigrant visa petition all right so you're saying hey i want to go to us without the purposes of immigrating to us us asking for non-immigrant visa but i do have the immigrant petition already pending so with that being said it's kind of a hit and miss yes they might be granted this non-immigrant visa which would be great and honestly if you if you because it, i mean it's not cheap you know you're going you're paying 100 what is it 150 160 dollars right now for the non-immigrant visa fee right the uh, application fee um and, and the interview um, so it's not cheap so you're kind of risking losing that money if you have a chance to do that i would definitely recommend trying it because it would be great for them to just come here and visit you while you're waiting for the immigrant petition but don't be surprised if it is denied based on the fact that there is an existing immigration case basically petition uh pending so hopefully that helps and uh, i'm gonna place this here so that you're aware that i responded uh good luck and uh god bless thank you for watching the videos okay moving further to rise beto 209 how can i get a replacement of my i-765 approval form if it was lost okay so that was a question on the authorization renewing employment authorization card ah okay so i hope you're not asking this question because you lost your i-765 clearly you did uh and you also lost your employment authorization document the reason why i'm saying that is because if you do have your employment authorization document itself you don't need that for the the approval for it you just send them the copy of that 
employment authorization document, which already proves that you have had the employment authorization document before. All right. Now, if you don't have the employment authorization document itself, if you lost it, and maybe you're looking for the form itself, there is an option for lost EAD in the application, so you don't have to worry about. It. So, regardless whichever way you spin it, realistically, you don't really need the I-765 approval. Now, I can see one situation where you might need that approval letter, I-765, and that is if you got the approval, right, and it says that the EAD was sent to you, but you never got it, and now you need to prove to the USAS that, hey, I never got the EAD, here's my approval letter, I never received the EAD. In that case, you might need to reach out to USCIS directly uh, because, well, you don't really have any of the documents showing. Uh, if you do have the receipt number, that might be helpful. If you have the case number, the receipt number, you know, but if you don't have that, then you would have to reach out to USCIS further uh, to uh, get that information. So I'm going to put this here. Hopefully this was helpful. And moving further to Francisco Delgado. Is this guy an immigration attorney? No, every single video I mentioned that I am not an immigration attorney. Uh, this is not a legal advice. Moving further to Freddy Santos. They want to get paid twice. Because after this two more years, you must make another application for 10 years residence. What if my green card expires while waiting for renewal? Okay, so the two years here's here's the thing freddy the two years that we're talking about here is not the two years that you can can apply after two years the two years is all starts when you already applied for the application so let's say you submitted the application for the renewal of the green card so let's say your green card is expiring six months down the road right you submit the application for the renewal of your green card today you wait three months, nothing happens. You wait six months, nothing happens. Now your green card is technically expired. But because you have the application for the renewal pending, you have two years to maintain that legal status for your pending petition. So for two years, you're good. Even if it's pending for two years, which it, which it never does. But that's what the extension is for because some of the cases are being delayed. That's why USCIS extended that wait time. So it's not exactly what you think it is. Now, to your point of making another payment 10 years down the road. Yes, it's true. You're right. That is why I highly recommend just applying for naturalization. That's it. I've done a video uh, on how to apply for naturalization, basically getting U.S. citizenship, because if you have, if you've been a resident for five years, you can now apply for naturalization. So why not do that? Why wait 10 years, apply for another green card, pay another fee when you can just become a U.S. citizen? All right, moving further to Lisa uh, Montenegro. What about IOE Electronic Center? It's not in the list of facilities. Okay, so I'm assuming that's a question related to looking at the processing times uh, because if you do check the processing times and if you scroll down through all of the service centers that are available, the IOE is in fact is not there. And IOE, if you're, if you're not familiar with it, basically it's the electronic system. So with that being said, IOE is not exactly a separate center, no. Any center, whether it's California service center or Texas service center and Nebraska center, they all upload stuff a lot of applications uh in fact most of the applications that you I, i'm pretty sure most of the applications if not all of the applications that you fill out online they go directly into this electronic um electronic basically center right basically it's electronic upload that uss sort of i wouldn't say recently but implemented in order to streamline the application processing, basically making it much faster. Uh, so with that being said, if you're asking this question, then most likely you have IOE in your receipt number, the first three digits. So if that's the case, and if you want to check the status of that, the best thing to do is log in to your online USCIS account. Of course, most likely if you have the IOE receipt number starting with IOE, then you probably did create an online account with USAS, and then file your application online. So go through that. That's the best way to look it up. Uh, and then 
if you still want to get the processing times overall, then I would, like I showed you, I think, I'm not sure if I did it in this video or I did it in the other video, but basically I go through, I select the application type, I select the category or whatever, if there is any, and then I select each service center one by one, and then checking basically on the processing times of all the service centers combined, kind of uh, average it out. That would be a, a good estimation for the processing time for the IOE, but most likely even faster because it is in electronic version and the electronic version was designed, the whole electronic system uh, was implemented by USCIS to make these applications process much faster. Okay, moving further to Shirley Matthew. How much for renew a green card? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, I, I don't know right out of the bat, but let's find out. It's a great chance for me to demonstrate some uh, navigation on USAS.gov, which I'd like to do in every video so you're familiar. This is the official website. This is their front page. We're gonna go to forms and navigation menu. Then we're gonna go to all forms. And if I'm not mistaken, it is the form I-90. Let me double check if that is correct because there's a lot of forms as you can see. I-90 for some reason never comes up here. So we're gonna type it in, 90, search. There we go, application to replace permanent resident card. That's what we need. And as you can see, the very first thing it says, check naturalization eligibility. Again, USS wants you to get a naturalization. They want you to become a citizen. They don't want you to keep renewing your green card. So I recommend, highly recommend, applying for citizenship if it's possible. So filing fee, $455 plus there is an $85 biometric fee. Okay, so question has been answered. I'm gonna place this and we're gonna move on to the next one from Andrei Chernyshov. And the reason why I can read it is because I can speak Russian. <laughs> Hello, great job. Thank you, Andre, for watching. I'm sorry, but I don't quite understand, all right? See, you recommend filing I-589 online, that's good, but what should I do with the declaration and supporting documents? There are 200, 500 sheets, yes. Scan and send with I-589 online, or I can do it by post mail later. It's important to file the I-589 as soon as possible to meet the filing deadline and start the 150 day count to the work permit, thanks. Okay, Andre, excellent, excellent question. I'll start with the easiest questions. Yes, it is absolutely 100% important to file I-589 as soon as possible because you do want to this clock, the 150 day, which is, you know, if you are, you know, if you if you do, did your research on an asylum or if you're planning to apply for asylum or if you went through the asylum process, you know how important this clock is. Honestly, this clock is quite ridiculous if you ask me and I, I think it, it needs to be zero. You apply for asylum, clearly you're gonna be waiting here in the United States for a long time. Why not give you a chance to legally work in the United States, paying taxes and doing all of these things? Makes much more sense, right? Than for 150 days, you know, that's that's a lot, long time. And I'm pretty sure right now, actually, Andre, I think they raised it to 180 days, I think. So now it's, uh, uh, what is it, six months, I think, um, the, the, the clock went up. Um, so yes, absolutely 100%, the, the sooner you file this application, the faster this clock starts going. Just keep in mind that this clock stops whenever there is some kind of response from USAS regarding your asylum application. Let's say if, if your case is, you know, so there's a, some complication, there's a rebuttal letter that was sent, uh, there's some kind of uh, decision that was issued, anything that is other than positive, other than granted, right? Um, so. Keep that in mind. But let's go back to your other question, which is oh, probably will take me a little bit more to respond. Can you file your application and then submit the additional documents later? Yes, you absolutely can. In fact, a lot of people do it this way. A lot of people fill out the online application separately, I-589, because now it is it goes and it is in process and then they mail all the stuff later. Can you use the online application to attach the documents and submit them electronically? Yes, you absolutely can. Now, in your instance, of course, 200, 500 sheets, that is a lot of stuff, all right, to electronically scan and upload. Can you do that? Yes, you can. But most likely, if, if I'm correct, I recommend you doing it this way. If I'm not correct, well, you, you will have to do deal with the whole 200, 500 sheets. But, 
if let's say you are using let's say a newspaper article right a big newspaper article or maybe maybe a book to support the evidence or a report like let's say from you know from world health organization or something you're using a report and it's like a 50 page report for the purposes of the application you don't need to send and attach the whole report as exhibit all you really need to do is just to get that paragraph those few sentences so one page with the paragraph highlighted forwarded to USAS to show hey in this report this is it this is the paragraph and it is applicable to my case I you know for for the for the interview itself of course you I, I definitely recommend bringing the whole report bringing the whole newspaper article bringing the whole book that's why the that's why USAS they say that you don't need to send the whole everything um, the originals basically with your application you're sending the copies and with the copy you can just highlight whatever is is needed as evidence and then you bring the original the whole thing to the interview for further processing um, of your case so yes you can definitely do it separately yes you can definitely upload everything all the, all, the whole everything if you if you if you want to to the online application uh, but whichever way you do it just find the most efficient one the fastest one that you can get the application in the hands of USAS and get that receipt saying that it was accepted because that's when your clock starts okay so hopefully I was helpful with my response if you have any follow-up questions please do not hesitate to ask all right thank you for watching let's move on to the next one from Kalini Klimi I think I pronounced sorry kill me I think sorry if I'm mispronouncing see oh okay so that's that I can't read this one unfortunately and translate it so you will have to English please English please uh, English please I'm gonna type it in like this so that there we go okay moving further to Monique Bunzi yes I 130 taking so long I put my son paperwork from 2018 and still waiting okay so Monique yes unfortunately I don't know why that's the case unmarried sons and daughters of US citizens which I'm, I'm assuming that you are a US citizen because strangely if you were a permanent resident your case would have been processed faster yes it's really weird but this is currently the case for uh, the categories and as you can see for F1 which is the first priority category are married sons and daughters of US citizens there's actually backlog going all the way to December 14 2014 yes so like a nine year backlog but for F2A which is the second uh, spouses and children of permanent residents it's current strange don't ask me why that's the question for USAS that's the question for Department of State that's the question for US Congress all right moving further to Shweta Shetty how to upload evidence online my card is about to expire in the next six months and can just typing the full name be considered a valid signature for online filing okay Shweta great question yes whenever you're signing the form online if you're filling out online application you will be asked to just type in your full name and the date that's it um, yes you can upload the evidence online to answer your first question you can definitely do that and great timing uh, six months about six months that's how long I would recommend filing the application if you're filing for the renewal of a green card um, six months is, is definitely sufficient uh, enough and yes you will be if you're filing online you will be able to upload everything online as well uh, which in fact there isn't really a lot of stuff that is needed for the renewal of the green card uh, pretty straightforward uh, application there okay let's move on to the next one from Rometh Dathrim son I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that my mother applied for me US citizenship as she was a US citizen after green card I was 38 years adult married child with husband child now 21 my mother petitioned for me in 2013 January still no answer yeah unfortunately yeah like I said these are on serious backlog and I, I am in fact right now in the very process uploading the video explaining why there is that backlog so if you have filed 
I-130, if someone filed I-130 for you, if you are somehow involved in family immigration process, I recommend checking out that video because I, I raised a few issues that are um, current with immigration process whenever it comes to the family, specifically whenever it comes to the family of US citizens, um, which seems to be, you know, it's, it's crazy, but there is a serious, serious backlog on uh, these cases because the number of visas that were issued by US Congress is severely, severely limited. Uh, so unfortunately, yes, and I'm gonna actually look it up for you and whoever's watching this video, maybe it will be helpful. So if you're petitioned January 2013, so January 2013, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So if January 2013, and looks like right now, the cases that are uh, on the final action date are from December 2013, but it's F1 unmarried unmarried sons and daughters. So we are actually looking, we have to be looking at the third category, F3, married sons and daughters of US citizens, which is also ridiculous and also severely limited. In fact, just as much as the first category. Um, and that is F3 right here. So final date of action is November 2008. And then the dates for filing are November 2009, which is only one year different. So estimating, you should hear about, you have about another four years, roughly, judging by the numbers that are as of March 2023, which is ridiculously long. And I, I, I don't understand it as much as, as anybody who's watching this video. And I can personally relate because I personally do have a petition uh, for one of my family members that I have been waiting for a very long time, not as much as you, but yeah. So I can definitely relate and I can definitely understand. 2013, so yeah, judging by these numbers here, about four more years, unfortunately. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this so that you know that you answered your question and we're gonna move on to the next one from Agnes D. Good day, I was petitioned by my mother under F1 visa, um, not the F1 student visa, F1 category immigrant visa, which is this one right here, it's the unmarried sons and daughters of US citizens. Um, I was documentary qualified since last April 2022. Great, congratulations. Until now, I'm still waiting for my schedule of visa interview. I'm a nurse here in the Philippines. If my profession has anything to do with the speed of my visa processing. Thank you very much. Okay, Agnes, as far as I know, profession has nothing to do with the speed the way uh, your visa is processed and how fast it is processed. Now, because you were in April 2022 and right now it's February 2024, so it's, let's see, March, October, November, December, January, or so, so about 10 months. So usually, usually it's, it's about six months to a year, uh, at least, at least, you know, in in the cases that I, I've looked at, between six months and a year that you get the response from the NVC. Now, you probably already received the NVC welcome letter, but if you, if you can, I would really like you to follow up and uh, comment maybe on this video and, and, and let me know if you actually got the welcome letter from an NVC, because that would be the whole next stage. If you're completely all done with the NVC, if you paid all the visa fees, if you submitted all the, you know, all the, all the documents that are needed, or, or maybe not you, maybe your mother, because it's, it's your mother that has to log into that NVC portal and provide all that information. If that, all of it has been done, six months to a year, you should be scheduled the interview. If NVC said that, hey, we got everything needed, the next stage is the interview. If that hasn't been done, however, nothing will move on. So I would verify with your mom to make sure that that has been completed because that is a very, very important stage uh, in the process. But if it was, then I would say within, within the next few months, you should, be, uh, you should be hearing from the Department of State with the interview that they scheduled for you. Okay, let's move on to the next one from Kandi Anzurat. You're very welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, let's move on to Aman Sandi. Dear sir, my name is Parveen Kaur. I submitted my husband application on 20th July 2020 and accepted on July uh, 28th July. Notice attached. Until now, I have not received approval letter. 
Since I have been waiting for such a long time, I request you to help us getting the approval letter, please. My last status showing as of February 17, 2022, we are actively reviewing your form I-130 petition for Ellen Relative. Okay, so it's just generic response from USS. Okay, so first things first, Parveen, I, unfortunately, there is nothing I personally can do to help you speed up this uh, application. Uh, this this channel, you know, all, all I can do is answer your questions, you know, point you in the right direction, hopefully in the right direction. I try to do my best, uh, but all the, that's why I use all the time the uh, official sources. Now, because you sent july 2020 what i can do is i can help you estimate the processing time so july 2020 you submitted for, for your husband i don't know if you are a u.s citizen or if you are a permanent resident but for u.s citizens the 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 there is no limitation on the visas for the immediate relatives like husband wife and children that are under 21 unmarried okay so no limitation there so those cases are processed pretty quick and you probably wouldn't have been waiting already since 2020 you probably would have already got the response so i'm assuming from your message you are most likely legal permanent resident so we're going to go to legal permanent resident and uh husband and wife's f2a same thing current with that being said they do process a little bit slower uh so if you submitted 2022 july 28th it has been accepted you should have you should have already received a welcome letter uh, from the NVC technically so what I would uh, actually do here on USA's website we're gonna go and we're gonna check the processing times on the I-134 legal permanent residence and we will see how long they take approximately let's see so another great opportunity to demonstrate how this works how to look out the processing times on the USAS side so as you can see check case processing times page we're gonna select the form I-130 petition for alien relative form category is going to be well let's try with permanent resident for spouse let's try that first let's see if you provided the information okay I don't know which processing service center so I'll select whichever one let's do California and see okay about two years let's see another one in Texas just for the out of interest about two years so 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 pretty pretty close you should be hearing anytime within the next few months you should be hearing back if you are a legal permanent resident but let's check you as citizen spouse if you're inviting your spouse and we're gonna do the same thing okay you see it's it's faster so about 10 months, so you should have already heard, if you were a US citizen, you would have already heard from USAS if that was the case. So you're probably LPR, and in the next few months, your case should be moving along. Looks like it's within the normal processing times. Okay, so it was uh, quite a long answer, but I hope I was able to help you with that. We're gonna move further, and we're gonna stop right here. And... Uh, Further, I'll, I'll have to get back in the next video and I'll, I'll try to do it today with another video where I answer questions because there's a lot of questions that I need to go through. Okay, so from Salvador Gummabone, we are petitioned by our daughter and was already approved last December 14 and have already welcomed by NVC. What next to do? Okay, great. Congratulations, you were approved. Now, if you've been welcomed by NVC, you have to go to the NVC portal. Um, your daughter, she should have received either by mail or by email, electronically, the login information for the NVC portal. She has to open it up. She has to log in. There will be a whole bunch of things that need to be done. A few applications, a few statements that needs to be paid for. Uh, there's a, a visa application that needs to be paid for. Uh, there is some statements that need to be provided some financial information from her if there is any additional joint sponsors they will have to be added to the application and then all of that it needs to be submitted to NVC for a review once it is reviewed once it is approved if it is approved a lot of times most of the times there's additional stuff that is required for NVC once you initially submit so don't be surprised and usually it is with reviewed within about two three months after it is submitted once everything is approved, you will be scheduled your interview with the embassy in your home country. In that period of time, between your scheduled interview, you will have to do the medical examination. So 
that's kind of the process described briefly. Uh, if you're interested to learn more about the process, check out the video, the application for the i130 that I've made. Uh, there's a little bit more details in there, uh, but there's also a response from Bertha. If she's a citizen, I would continue with the visa and application as a visa is always available for immediate members of US citizens. Yes, and in fact, I would even recommend, even if she's not a citizen and just a legal permanent resident, I would recommend just getting over with it and just paying all the fees and submitting the application and being completely done from your end. If there is any wait time, if their visa is not available yet, you need to wait, that is on them. But you've done your part and, and the, there's nothing else required from you. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next one. Khan Khan, USA, look what I do. What I do you. Okay, uh, Khan Khan, you're gonna need to be a little bit more specific what your question is. Uh, I'm gonna say, please be a bit more specific. Please be a bit more specific. Um, ask more specific question and I'll try to answer that. And we're gonna go to our very last question for today. And uh, like I said, next one, I will do the volume 19, hopefully, hopefully today as well. Okay, so I'm from Kimu Mohammed. Hi, my, hi, my guy, my mom did petition for me an immigrant visa in 2017 and been DQ since June 2020. And I was been waiting for my interview since then. And my mom recently became a US citizen. And right now, some months ago, my visa class has been upgraded to IR2. So when can you predict for me interview? Thanks. Okay, so your mom got the citizenship. So she filed for you as a legal permanent resident in 2017. Now, I'm assuming since you are, you know, since you still haven't had you know, anything, any kind of response, because if you were under 21 unmarried, it would be much faster. If you're still waiting and since 2017, well, let's take a look. Now she's obviously a citizen, so that would be this, since they upgraded this category. So 2017, currently the cases filed that are being processed, not processed, but the issue, the visa is being issued uh, to the cases that were received back in December 2014 and you're in 2017. So it's not an exact estimation. It's a very, very rough estimation because things can speed up, things can slow down. But as of right now, March 2023, this is when this bulletin was issued, March 2023, the visas are issued to the petitioners who's been to the beneficiaries of the petitioners that filed the petitions back in December 2014. So three years, about three years. And then there is a response from Agnes D. Hi, we have the same situation. I'm still waiting for the schedule of my visa interview for almost one year. Okay, so Agnes, she has everything clearly. If she's waiting for an interview, she already done everything on the NVC side. And I would recommend to Kimu, Kimu, make sure that your mom done everything on the portal, on the NVC portal. As long as it's, as it's all done, then the only thing that you have left is just waiting, which is, you know, unfortunately annoying and it, it takes a long time. Uh, and Agnes, thank you very much for answering to this as well. And, you know, if you're watching this video still 33 minutes later, thank you for sticking around. I try to help everyone on, on, uh, on this channel. Uh, but if you're watching this video, I would encourage you, you know, if you see a question, if you are similar situation, if you have been through a similar situation, please respond and it would be really helpful because when people, you know, respond to each other, they share their experiences, you don't feel alone in this process. You see how the process is going for other people and you kind of can estimate, you kind of can, you, you know what to expect. And it, it really does help uh, because, you know, immigration process, it certainly can be comp complicated. It can be overwhelming. It can be a little bit scary for some people if you don't know what, if you never dealt with anything like this, you're just starting this, all these enter interviews, all these background checks, medical examination, it's a little bit scary. Uh, so when you see other people sharing their experiences, it makes it easier, it makes it much easier. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, as always, uh, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. God bless and uh, I'll see you in the next video.